around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the spell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. It was over a hundred miles back to Dodge, but I figured I could make it easy in a day and a half. I'd been in Hayes City as a government witness in a murder trial, and I was anxious to get back. So I rode out of Hayes one morning a couple of hours before light. The ground was clear as snow, but it was midwinter, and it was sharp cold. When the day came, there was no sun, only dark gray sky drilled by a high, cold, searching wind. The air was as thin as I could ever remember it being. And behind me in the north lay a great slab of blackness. When I saw that, I should have turned back, for the wind stood out of the north, too, and sooner or later it would drive that black slab right down on top of me. This was blizzard weather. The kind of weather that kills the land and everything on it. I don't know why I went on, maybe because of the wind. You know, a high wind will distemper a man. Make him drunk-like. Anyway, I didn't turn back. And about noon, the sky began to turn white with snow, and I could smell a touch of moisture in the air. And finally it came. The sleet, shrilling in on the wind like small buckshot as the blizzard howled on the prairie. I couldn't look right or left without being stung blind, but as long as I kept the wind on my back, I knew I was headed south. Two hours of this, and I could feel my horse slowing down and weakening under me. My own body stiffened with the cold. Men died when they got caught in a thing like this. They died easy. Another hour passed, and my horse was carrying his head close to the ground. I figured he'd stumble soon, so I kicked my feet out of the stirrups and braced myself against the horn. By now, the wind had really gotten into me. And when I saw the blur of a ranch house up ahead, I thought maybe it was a trick. But a few minutes later, we rounded a corner of the place and stood at last in the lee of the storm. I slid down and got up to the door and pounded on it. And I waited. Then I pounded again. Then the door came open and the figure stood in the light. Who are you? Bring him in, L.B. Any men out in that weather's been made harmless. Get inside. Out of the way, L.B., you fool. All right, stranger, hands in the air. High. That's better. Unload him, L.B. Nice gun, Hack. Real nice gun. Shut up. Now, take him down, stranger. You can come up to this stove now, but don't try nothing. I'll cut you in half with buckshot. He was a burly man with flushed cheeks and a wild red beard and a great shock of red hair. Even his hands and fingers bristled with it. He sat on a stool by the stove, a shotgun across his knees. And his eyes never left me. The other one, Alvy, had a body of an underfed boy, but he was completely bald, and his skin was tight and dry. He looked like a naked skull, and his eyes, well, something had touched Alvy. You look half froze, stranger. You must have wanted something real bad to go out in weather like this. I never saw him around here before, Hack. He's a stranger, Alvy. He don't belong around here. 
course, we don't know anybody, but I've I, I seen a few, and i never seen him before. Maybe he's seen you, Alvy, somewhere. Not me. He, he never saw me nowhere. How do you know that? Maybe he was just looking for some cows and got lost in the storm. You're just a kid, Alvy. always said you don't know much. Bell! Bell, get on out here. She was a pretty girl but with a dark, half-wild look that I'd never seen before in a woman. Her eyes jumped from man to man and then came to rest on me, fixed and curious. And then after a moment, she looked away and moved into a chair across the room. Supper ready, Belle? It's awful cold out. You recognize him, Belle? You ever see him before? No. Nope. You're sure now. Maybe Hayes City... Maybe you saw him up there sometime. I don't know him. You sure? Yes. If you're lying to me, you know what I'll do to I you. I never saw him before. He come in here half froze, right right out of the blizzard. Must have been looking for some cows and got lost. Shut up, Alby. We don't know what he's doing here, Bill. Why shouldn't a man get out of the storm? Even in here. That's enough. All right, stranger, we never saw you before. We don't know who you are. And as soon as I think you're lying, I'm going to blow a big hole in you. What about my horse? I'd like to put him in the barn if you've got one. Alvy? Oh, now, Hack, I ain't going out there. I'd freeze. And the horse will freeze if you don't. It's his horse. We might need it. Go on, Alvy, before I get cross. All right, I'll go. I know why the horse is so important. Elvie's a good boy. He'll put your horse up. Thank you. Supper's about ready. Leave it. I want to talk to our friend here first. Maybe we won't have to feed him. Potatoes will get mealy. They better not, that's all. I'm right curious about you, mister. I've noticed that. I'll blow your guts all over the wall. You make fun of me. Don't get me mad, mister. I got the shotgun. The meat will be boiled to shreds if we don't eat soon. You just won't understand any other way, will you, Bell? What is it you want to know about me? <laughs> I can tell, mister, I can handle you easy now. What do you mean? All I got to do is wallop the girl and you'll talk. I don't have to do nothing to you. All right, if I take my jacket off, I've warmed up now. I mind. You might have a gun hit out in there. He can raise his hands. I'll unbutton it. Well, now, that's right smart of you, Bell. Oh, I'll hide it. No, leave it be. Bell. Come over here, Bell. Drop the jacket, Bill. Now hold out your other hand. Now open it, Bill. Open your hand. That's real bad what you did, Bill. Real bad. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you outside for a spell out in the weather. After supper, after you've cleaned up supper, you can be thinking about it till then. United States Marshal. You're in bad company, Marshal. You shouldn't have come here. Oh? Well, it looks to me like I sort of struck gold coming here. Now, why do you talk like that, Marshal? I still got the shot. Let me get that stove. Seems like it's getting colder and colder. You didn't see any sign of nobody outside, did you, Alvy? What? Ooh. Somebody might have come along to cover the marshal here, it's all. Marshal? What, what, what marshal? Me. I'm a marshal, Alvin. Shoot him, Hack. Shoot him. Shut up and answer me. Was there sign of another horse footprints, anything like that? Ah, oh, I didn't see nothing. Maybe you didn't look. Would I have walked in here the way I did if I'd been after you people? Maybe your head got muddled with the cold. Where'd you ride from, Marshal? Hayes City. Left there this morning. <laughs> 
It was a fool thing to do with a blizzard coming up. Maybe. Or did you think you could get the jump on us easier in a storm? Was that it, Marshal? Yeah. You knew we'd be trying to keep cozy in here. I'm curious, Hack. What are you and Alvy on the run for? Don't you tell him, Hack. I don't trust him at all. <laughs> Alvy, it'd be mighty dull without you, boy. <laughs> don't laugh at me, Hack. Now stop it. I don't like laughing. You know that, Hack. And don't you do it no more. I got ways. Yeah, I ain't seen you in your ways. But don't try them on me, Alvy. Maybe I won't. Look, Alvy, now you don't understand. It's all right to tell the marshal about us. He ain't going nowhere. No? No, of course not. We'll kill him, Alvy. We'll kill him and bury him somewhere. Oh, sure. Now, now, why didn't I think of that? Because I do the thinking for us, Alvy. That's why. Now, uh, what was it you like to know, Marshal? Stop playing games, Hack. Me and Alvy are wanted for murder. Up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Seems a mite unfair, though. We didn't aim to kill nobody. It just happened that way. We was robbing a bank. Yeah, and a couple of the people there wouldn't do what we told them, so Alvy used his knife on one, but it just made the man holler. You could hear him all over town. And we had to shoot our way out after that. Must have killed three or four people. I know I killed two. Worst of it was, Marshal, all we wanted just then was some money. We didn't care about killing anybody. But you know how it is, Marshal, when you're robbing a bank and all. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> now, I don't suppose you do it that. Anyway, we're wanted for murder, and we didn't even get any money. Nary a dollar. So we rode out here and lighted for a spell. I see. What about Bell? And whose place is this, anyway? My place, now that Pa's gone. You mean you were living here alone? No. They killed your Pa, is that it? Yes. How long ago? I don't know. Maybe a month. Yeah, it's been about a month, hasn't it, Alvy? Thirty-five days. There, you see? Alvy always knows just how long everything's been. Now, that's fine. Tell me what you do with him. Who? The old man. Oh, we, we buried him out back. We <laughs> couldn't afford a funeral. <laughs> Could we, Alvy? Hack, 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 we told him that. Now let's shoot him. No, no, I've been thinking it over. People in Hayes City know he started for Dodge, and when he don't show up, they might come looking for him. But you, you said we'd bury him, Hack. That's what you said. Yeah, that's right, but we can't bury his horse, too. Not in this ground. It's froze solid. And if we turn the horse loose and they find it and can't find the marshal's body, then they'll suspect something. You're pretty smart, Hack. Too bad you don't know enough to stop killing people. Too bad for you, anyway. Well, what are we going to do, Hack? I'm getting hungry. That supper won't be fit to eat. Shut you? up! One more word out of you, Bella, and I'll whoop you good. Come on, Hack. I'm really hungry. No, no, li listen to me, Alvy. Now, my idea is to knock the marshal on the head and throw him outside to freeze. Now, he'll keep real good that way. And when the storm breaks, we can carry him off 20 miles or so and dump him on the ground. Look like he got thrown and hit his head and froze. Oh, that's fine, Hack. That's just fine. Then we'll break his horse's leg, make it easier for them to find him. You just don't care about anything, do you, Hack? Just me. Sometimes, Alvy. Sure. Me and Hack are, are friends, ain't we, Hack? Of course, if it don't want snowing, we'll have to think of something else. Can't leave tracks for them to follow back there. Oh, Hack, ain't we gonna kill him now? Well, sure, sure we are, Alvy. I didn't mean that. Let me hit him, huh? Y you keep the gun on him, and I'll get up behind and hit him. Th there was a Brandon iron around here somewhere. I'll, I'll hit him with that. Hack, you sunk pretty far, but I'm sort of wondering just how far. What do you mean? I'm wondering if you're low enough to... Kill a man before he's been fed. Here, here it is, Hack. Here, see? I found it. Leave it be, Alvy. We're going to eat first. We 
We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, this Sunday night, Lionel Barrymore is your host and Joseph Cotton the star on Sunday Night Playhouse's gripping historic drama based on the life of Peter Marshall. Hear how a Scottish immigrant lad rose to the position of chaplain of the United States Senate. A story you'll agree is far more fascinating than fiction. Remember, it's tomorrow night when Lionel Barrymore introduces another Sunday night playhouse on most of these same CBS radio stations. Now for the second act of Gunsmoke. It was only five in the afternoon, but the blizzard had darkened the land, and its blackness showed in at the windows. Here and there along the walls of the ranch house, tricklets of snow blew in through the warped timber. In the kitchen, Hank sat directly behind me while I ate. Later changed places with Alvy and fed himself heartily, as though he had nothing at all on his mind. Hack was just a nerveless brute, born with no conscience at all. His intelligence was the instinct of an animal that snapped at or killed whatever got in its way of survival. Every living thing was his enemy. And Alvy? Well, there was no way to figure Alvy. Too much of him was missing. My only chance lay in the girl, Belle. Even though Hack had... Pretty well beaten all resistance out of her. Supper was over soon enough, but Hack seemed in no particular hurry to get on with his plans. I've eaten better food on the trail than that. Can't blame me for it. Now get it cleaned up, Belle. You can talk your head off when you're outside alone, and you're going outside. I'll learn you to heal if I have to break your neck. Now, don't do that, Hack. Not till we're ready to pull out, anyway. Why? Well, I ain't gonna do the cooking. Well, I hope not. I've eaten your cooking. My sister was a good cook. Yeah, we should have brought her along, Alvy. No. No. I don't like her. Where are you from, anyway? Which, me or Alvy? Well, you to start with. Wyoming. Place called Crowhart. I didn't stay there long, though. What about you, Alvy? Now, where were you born, Alvy? I never did know. Republican River. (laughs) <laughs> that's not a place, you fool. Well, that's what they told me, Republican River. They always lived in a wagon, my ma and pa. Had a lot of kids, too. Of course, most of them died. I'm about the only one that made out any good at all. And you did fine, I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, give me the shotgun. Yeah. All right, Marshal, let's get back by the stove while Bell cleans this mess up. Shall we hit him and... Throw him out to freeze up now, Hack? Not yet. I want to punish Bell first. You know, someday you're going to get caught without that shotgun, Hack. Somebody's going to tear you apart. That's fair enough, Marshal. Give me a fair chance at you then, huh? Barehanded? No. Oh, you're bigger than I am, Hack. Might be fun for you. I don't know nothing about fun. I ain't going to kill you because it's fun. Oh, come on, Hack. I want to go to bed. Bell. Bell, come out here. Get outside like I told you. And don't open that door so wide you'll blow the lamp out. Bell had walked through the room and out the door without a glance at any of us. I figured she'd go down to the barn where she'd be all right for a little while anyway. But I knew I'd have to make a move soon. I sure wasn't going to sit there like a fall hog and let Alvy knock me in the head whenever he got ready. But it didn't take much more sense to try to jump Hack in that shotgun and let him blow me all over the place. It was a beggar's choice, and the more I thought about it, the matter I got. Uh, Hack, I'm sleepy. I'm gonna hit him and go to bed. You can do what you want after, but I ain't staying up all night. 
I hope he's got his mind made up, Marshal. I can tell. Just what do you call his mind, Heck? I got ways to fix you, Marshal. Nah, never mind, Alvy. Wrap some around that iron, otherwise it won't look like he hit his head on a rock. What difference it makes? Do what I say, Alvy. All right, Hack. Here, I'll use this curtain. Now, keep your eyes on me, Marshal. Alvy moved around behind me and was getting a good grip on his brand and iron. I leaned slightly forward in the chair and was tensed and waiting for the split second when my instinct had told me to jump. And then suddenly the door was flung wide open and the wind roared in, almost lifting the room as it came. The lamp flared and then went out as I plunged sideways from the chair. Ah! Did you hit him, Alvy? Did you hit him? Ah, You bloody fool. Don't you try nothing, Marshal. I got some more shells right here. Don't you move now. I crawled across the room and was out the door before Hack could reload. In the snow outside, I stood up and turned to find Belle waiting by the side of the door, a pitchfork in her hand. I couldn't see her face very well in the dark, but I could tell she was shaken with cold. I reached out and took the fork from her and then flattened myself against the wall and waited. I was afraid it was you he shot. That was a smart trick, Belle, throwing the door open that way. He shot Alvy, didn't he? Yeah. Good. I think he's found out I'm not in there. What are you going to do? Wait. Marshal. Marshal. I'm going to kill you and the girl both now. I waited, praying he'd come through the door before my hands got too cold to hold the pitchfork. And finally, the barrel of the shotgun appeared waist high and began to poke its way around in our direction. It was stupid of him, but the man behind the gun often gets a false sense of power. I let him shove it out three or four inches, and then I slammed down on it. (laughs) Then I jumped into the room. Hack tried to club me with a gun, but he missed. And I got in under him with a fork and lifted him off his feet. (laughs) And he struggled for a moment like a spirit fish and then went limp. And I let him fall. One of the prongs had reached his heart. Did you get him, Marshal? Is he dead? Yeah. I light the lamp. I can't do it, Marshal. My fingers are too stiff. Here, I'll I'll do it. There. Uh, quite a mess in here. Why don't you wait in the kitchen, Bill? I'm all right, Marshal. But I can't help you much till I get warmed up some. Well, then you'll stay by the stove, huh? I'll lug these people outside. Thank you, Marshal. <laughs> Marshal? Marshal Dillon? What? Oh. Morning, Belle. Come on out in the kitchen, Marshal. It's warm there, and I got some hot coffee waiting. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, I say, it looks like the storm's lifted. It has. The wind's gone, but it's mighty cold out. Well, I don't mind the cold. It's that wind that breaks a man down. There. Get some of that in you. Ah. Oh, you make mighty good coffee, Belle. <laughs> Tell me something, Marshal. Hmm? Tell me the truth now. Oh, uh, sure, Belle. What is it? Are you married? I'd make a... Poor husband, Belle, for any woman. Why? Well, in my profession, it's... It's too chancy. 
Thank you, Marshal. Thanks for putting it that way. Now, Bell, I, I didn't mean... Forget to... it. I'm leaving this place, Marshal. What? As soon as you go, I've packed what I need and I'm clearing off. Where'll you go? I got three horses. I'll ride up to Hayes City and sell them. Then what? I'll buy some pretty clothes and... and I'll find a place. Won't be hard after this. I, uh... I wish I could help you, Belle. You have. Oh, but I mean... I can uh... take care of myself, Marshal. I just want to get away from here, that's all. Sure. Uh, I'll stop at the nearest ranch and tell the men to come over here and take care of Hack and Alvy soon as it warms up. Whatever you like, Marshal. Well, <laughs> goodbye, Belle. Goodbye, Marshal. Look me up in Hayes City next time you're there. Sure. Sure I will. But, uh... Belle, don't let all this make you bitter. There are a lot of good men in the world. So they say. So long, Marshal. I, uh... So long, Belle. A few minutes later, I'd saddled up and was on the trail to Dodge. The sky was low and a slate gray all over, but there was no wind. The blizzard had gone, leaving the land still and white and bitter cold. There wasn't a sign of life anywhere. It was like riding through a vast tomb. I found myself feeling like a trespasser. As though something had gone wrong. And I wasn't supposed to be there at all. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner as Hack, Harry Bartell as Alvy, and Vivi Janice as Bell. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Starts this Monday, a new run for Road of Life, returning to CBS Radio to join the rest of your daytime listening favorites at the Star's Address. Road of Life, telling the day-to-day -day story of surgeon scientist Dr. Jim Brent. We'll keep your interest at a high point every Monday through Friday on most of these same stations. Remember, starting this coming Monday, Road of Life in its 16th year will be heard again on CBS Radio. Roy Rowan speaking. America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.